Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back. The last time I shared with you why I changed from a Synology to an Unraid server for my personal storage needs, for my personal cloud, so to speak. And I promised you guys that I would do a step-by-step -step on how I set up my Unraid server, starting with the disk configuration, because Unraid is very flexible. You can use all kinds of disk types, uh, being it SSD, NVMe, M2 or SATA disks, you can mix and match basically, but also you can mix and match sizes as well. So when I started out with Unraid, I had some challenges deciding how to set up my array because the array is the main storage pool, so to speak. That's the place where all your data will be stored for a long period of time. And then you have several pool configurations. It was not clear to me how to set up the specific array configuration and the specific pool configurations in order to meet the requirements I had and keep the performance in there because there can be some challenges. Let's get into it. Now, this is the official documentation from Unraid explaining what Unraid is and how you can set up your parity protected array because your array is the, is the primary place where all your data will be stored in the end because that's uh, meant to be the place to have your data in there for a long period of time. That's the array configuration, right? But then there are several pool configurations as well. Well, I would suggest go through this document um, in order to have a better understanding on how Unraid works specifically and what options are there and what are the features you will need in order to meet your data requirement needs. And here we have my Unraid server. I'm in the main tab now. And at the top of the page, we have the array devices. The array devices, this is basically your array. And this is the place where, well, actually on the array, you will keep your files for a long period of time. That's the whole idea of having that array in there because that will have the largest uh, size of your uh, for your NAS requirements. And then, of course, the array needs to be protected. In my case, I have one parity disk in here and several data disks, so to speak. The parity disk, together with the data disks, is protecting my array for disk failures. That means if one of my disks fails, I am uh, still access to all the data. Just swap out that disk for a working one, and Unraid will rebuild the data in there as well. Now, in Unraid, in the array device configuration, you can have two parity disks. For my situation, I think that I one parity disk is fine. Um, I'm taking regular backup of the files on my array, so make sure that you set it up as well. So, as you can see here, my array consists of several disks, and all the disks have different sizes. I have eight terabyte disks in there, but I have I also have two terabyte disks in there. You need to make sure that your parity disk needs to be the largest disk in your array, or at least at the same size as the largest disk you have in your array. It cannot be, cannot be smaller than any other disk in here. In my case, I have the 8 terabyte disk there because the largest disk in my array devices is an 8 terabyte disk. So an 8 terabyte disk for my parity, and then smaller disks to, uh, together with other disks creating the rest of the array devices. This is again one of the um, one of the most powerful features which I needed there because this will give me the the possibility to just reuse disks I have laying on the shelf and make them useful again instead of um, recycling them because they are perfectly fine they are just a little bit too small. Now, after you've decided to set up your array with the devices, they say that disks you are going to use there basically. The next thing is to set up a cache for that array because you don't want that array spinning up all those disks every time you need to read or write something to one of your shares because your shares will live on the array. So Unraid gives you the option to create pool devices and a pool device can consist of different disks and have different functionality. So what I've decided to do is create a cache for my array. That's why the name, as you can see here, it's cache for the array, cache array in my case. I've decided to use two, NV, two SSDs in that cache array in that pool device. And that will make sure that um, when one of those SSDs fail, I still have the data. What I'm doing now is using the scheduler of Unraid, 
I am moving the data from my cache device, my cache pool, basically to the array devices on a scheduled period. I'm doing it once a week, that's fine. So one of the choices is for you to make, uh, to set up a cache for your array. You want it to be fast. It consists of SSDs. They are power efficient. And uh, that means that your array doesn't have to be spun up every time uh, with all the disks. So that's one of the choices I had to make. The other choice is I want to run some virtual machines and Docker containers on Unrate as well. But again, I don't want to run it on the array because the array is for long-term storage. Also, because of the array consists only of SATA devices, it's not very fast. I wanted a dedicated pool device set up for my virtual machines and Docker containers. So what I've done, I've created a additional pool device, again, consisting of two NVMEs in this case, and that will give me some redundancy and security uh, for when one of the devices fail. So my virtual machines and my Docker containers are running on that um, on that pool device, which name uh, which I've named Cache VMs and Docker. Just for my uh, understanding, I know then that's the array or the the pool device I'm using to run my VMs from and run my Docker containers from. So that was another choice I had to make. Now, a third pool device in my case, I've created a single NVMe and that's basically a scratch disk, so to speak. That means it's just a landing zone, right? If I download something from the internet and I want to keep it temporarily because I will use it some somewhere or sometime, um, I can just put it on uh, this uh, device, on this pool. It's a share which is living on this pool. We are going to shares on another video. But it, this disk is basically there to serve that purpose, is to just be a scratch disk or be a general share or a public share, so to speak, in my network. So if I copy something to my downloads folder on my network, it will land uh, on this device. And this is not nothing special, of course, because all the software and all the information there, all the data there, if this disk is lost, I can just re-download it from the internet. But this is one of the options I had, uh, given the hardware I had also. So one device in there is perfectly fine because I can re-download everything if I need to. Another thing I've set up is a time machine backup. Um, this is just a USB, USB disk attached to the Unraid server. I've set up a specific pool device to use as a time machine backup for my uh, Mac OS uh, uh, MacBooks and systems here. So this is very nice to have as well on Unraid because you can assign a specific device with a specific share, of course, to for time machine only. In another video, I will go over that configuration. So just to wrap up, I've created my array devices, which consist of SATA disk. Then I have four pool devices, Two of them are redundant setup because one of them is the cache for the array to have a fast cache device for the array. The other one is to run my VMs and my Docker from, from and a uh, separate one just to have a place to copy over files and software I download from the internet. So that's fine. And then of course, a time machine backup. That's the configuration and the setup I've decided on when setting up my Unraid server. I think this works for me, of course. You can have a different configuration. Keep in mind that the data, because in the end, all your shares from your network perspective, they will live on these devices. In another video, I will go into how I set up my shares and where a share is located and how data is moved from the cache device to the array device based on a scheduled period. File systems, I have chosen to use XFS on the array. XFS is proven and from a uh, stability perspective, it's very nice to have it in there. Uh, I have used uh, chosen to use ButterFS for my cache, uh, which is serving the array, and the other one, which is serving VMs and Docker, I've chosen to use ButterFS instead of ZFS. ZFS is relatively new to Unraid. I'm sure um, it's working fine. Uh, I just went with ButterFS. I think that's working in the configuration with a RAID uh, 1 setup. It's working perfectly as well. And then the one device I'm using as a landing zone scratch disk scratch share for my network 
well that's at xfs as well i don't need to have the uh, extra protection from the bottom fs or zfs file system in there and of course you have your usb device where unraid is installed and where it's starting from and that's the way i've set up my unraid server and make sure that you have your array devices set up with parity, uh, a specific cache device uh, for the array, because that will make reading and writing to your array fast. And then, of course, if you choose to run VMs and Docker in there, you can run it from the array. I wouldn't do that performance-wise. The array, uh, just think about the array as a lot of storage, cheap storage, but slow storage. And those pool devices, that will be your fast storage. That will be NVMe, that will be SSD or M2. That will be the fast devices you will use to have your VMs running from, your Docker's running from, or reading and writing, or basically writing data to your shares, because then that data will go in the cache and the cache will move, and rate will move that data from the cache to the array at a given time you can set up. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button below. If you have comments, leave it in the comment section and I will try to get to them as soon as possible. See you next time. Take care.